I am going to show you how to make a basic six-sided die using SketchUp. Uh, this will be something that we can ultimately export to the laser cutter and make uh, out of plywood. So we're going to use our basic RPG format rectangle push group. So let's begin. Side one on the bottom of the screen. We're going to select R4 rectangle. And we'll click, drag, click. And let's make this four inches by four inches. I'll type four comma four. Makes it really small there, so let's zoom in. P for push, click, drag, click. I like to exaggerate my movements so that when I type the dimension, 0.25, I can see the change that it makes. Spacebar, triple click, and make a group. So there's our first side. Before we go on, let's go ahead and put the pip in it, the, the dot for the, for the die. So since we've already grouped this, we need to enter that group. So we double click. I get this box around the outside that tells me I can now edit the inside of this. And let's draw a line from corner to corner. This is just temporary. But what this does is this gives me a midpoint for this. There's a way you can inference those lines, but we'll do it this way. We'll do C for circle, hover over the midpoint, click drag, click, and let's do 0.25 for our radius. And we'll do that same for all of those. All right, let's get rid of those lines. So I'll hit space bar again to get my select tool. And we'll just go through and delete all these extra lines. So I've got a circle there. Now we need to make that become a hole. So we'll use our push command, P for push. I'll click on this face. And this is tricky because I can't really see how deep that is. And if you don't have a scroll wheel mouse, it's really hard to do this while you're, um, while you're doing that push operation. But if I hover on this edge right here, it tells me on edge. I can show you what that looks like from the bottom, right? I don't have to be where the circle is. All I have to be is somewhere on that face to tell it that's where to stop. And now we have a hole. So there's our first face right there. Okay, when I click outside of the group, it un undoes the group editing. I can click on it once and I can see that that is one whole group all together with that dot on it. Okay, so let's do our next side. Make sure we're out of our group edit mode. We'll do R for rectangle. And sometimes it doesn't like to inference correctly. Like right now, oops, sorry, click. See, it might try to go out on that blue plane there. I can force it to this face just by clicking really small on the edge of the cube. So if I click here and then type four comma four, it will make it the correct size. Okay, there's my rectangle. We wanna to work towards the inside of the cube. We want the outside to be four inches. We have a rectangle, let's do P for push. Click, drag, go ahead and super exaggerate it, click. And then when I type 0 0.25, it'll snap back to that dimension that I want. Spacebar triple click, make a group. Let's put two dots on this side. So I could have done this whole part and then made the group, but I like to make the group right after doing the, um, the push just to make sure I don't make a mistake. Now it's real easy to draw the circles here without entering the group and then you've got two different groups going on. So before I do the next step, double click, make sure I've got the rectangles around the outside and let's put a line here and we'll do this one a little bit differently. I only have the one midpoint right here, but I don't have a location for these out here. So one way to do this is to go from the center where that midpoint is, make sure it says midpoint, to a corner. And that's going to create a new midpoint here and here. C for circle. We'll go click, drag, click. Go ahead and make it super big. And then you can type 0.25 and it will resize it. Same thing here. Click, drag, click, 0.25 spacebar, and then we can delete all of these lines. Oop, undo. That wasn't a line, that was a face. Okay, just like before, we'll do a P for push. Click on the hole, touch the bottom edge right there, and you can see that it went through. Click once on the hole, click again on the back face, spacebar, and click on the outside. So there's two sides of our die. Now we can see right down here, We've got these two pieces interfering with each other. We'll come back to that later. Let's go ahead and leave those 
overlapping like that for now. That just gives us a space to work with. All right, side number three, rectangle, click. Anywhere on this face, we might be able to, nope, see how it wants to go flat there. But if I just keep it right there on this edge, click, drag, click again, and right away without doing anything, type four comma four. There it goes right there. P for push, click, drag, click, 0.25, right there. Triple click, make a group. All right, we'll do just like we do with the two, only we're going to do three holes now instead of two. So if I did this one in the perfect world, I'd probably put those two holes closer together, but let's keep it easy for now. All right, so we'll double click on this. And you can see where those other groups are. They're kind of green. That's okay. Make a line from corner to corner. Make another line from the corner to the midpoint. And now we can make three circles. Right there on this midpoint. Click, drag, click, 0.25. Click, drag, click, 0.25. Click, drag, click, 0.25. Now we have three holes. Spacebar gets me back to edit mode, and then we just go and delete all of these. All right, P for push, and it helps if you can see this edge right here before you start that command. Click to the edge, and don't worry, as I go here, you can see it's like shooting way back there. Just get it right there on that edge. Make sure you get that red dot, or it might be a different color depending on which side you're looking at. All right, spacebar gets me out of push mode. Got my three holes, they go all the way through. All right, so now this is where things get important. We wanna make sure when we're making a die that the opposite side always adds up to seven. So we have one, two, three. My next number is four, which goes opposite the three. So three plus four is seven, which means my fourth side will go right here. Same thing, rectangle. Click, drag, click. Four comma four. P for push, click, oopsie, undo, let's try that again. Click, drag, click, 0.25, triple click, make a group. And then double click to enter the group. This time we wanna put four in there, so we've got some drawing to do to make this even. You could, I suppose, randomly just draw four circles, but we wanna be kinda of neat about this. So let's do, this time we'll go from the midpoint here to the midpoint there, midpoint there, midpoint there, and then we're gonna go like this. Midpoint to midpoint, midpoint to midpoint. And then I'm gonna go those midpoints. So just keep grabbing midpoints until you've got a square in the middle. There's probably an easier way to do this, but this way definitely takes more steps, but it doesn't take quite as much brain power. There we go. That just means we're gonna have a bunch of lines to delete later. All right, same thing, circle. Click, drag, click, 0.25. Click, drag, click, 0.25. Click, drag, click, 0.25. And last one, click, drag, click, 0.25. Spacebar and delete all the lines. All right, push command. Oopsie, undo. I ran my mouse into the keyboard and it clicked it for me. Click, 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 click. Spacebar gets me out of that. Click away. Now I've got four sides. All right, I just had a cookie break and had a great idea for the five. I think I found an easier way to do this. So we have one, two, three, four. This side right here will be the five opposite the two. Rectangle, corner to corner. Push, 0.25. Now notice on the rectangle, I didn't have to type the dimensions because I just had to go corner to corner. It was already done for me. Space bar, triple click, make a group. All right. And we're gonna double click this to enter the group. Let's make a line from here to here. And a line from here to here. 
And remember when we drew all those squares to get this midpoint here? We could have done it with two lines all along. So if you watch the whole video and then go back, you can do the four this way. Watch. Circle from that midpoint. 0.25. From this midpoint. 0.25. From this midpoint. 0.25. And from this midpoint. 0.25. See, I told you there was a faster way to do it. And for the five, we're just going to make one more circle, 0.25, right there. Spacebar and delete all of our lines. And push them out. Spacebar and click. All right, and all of my holes went through. All right, last one, side six, checks out. One plus six is seven, that's what we want. Rectangle, click and click, and again, I don't need to type dimensions because I have two corners now. Push, We're in. we will go down into the die. Notice how it's covering up all those things, that's fine. 0.25, triple click, and make a group. Now you're gonna know right away if you didn't make one of those others into a group because it'll group all of the additional sides. All right, double click, we wanna make Let's see here. Let's do it this way. Midpoint to midpoint, midpoint out. And then we can go from this midpoint all the way across. There we go. And from this midpoint all the way across. And let's see here. We need these midpoints here. When in doubt, just draw a bunch of midpoints. And then we can count out our circles. One. two, three, four, oops, I missed. I totally didn't go on the intersection there. There we go. All right, so I'm using Control-Z for those undos if you missed that. Delete the lines. All right, P for push. Since this is totally closed in, we won't be able to see those, but this will still work. If you just click on the face, click on the edge. Click on the face, click on the edge, click on the face, click on the edge, face, edge, face, edge, face, edge. Oop, that last one didn't work. Look at that, let's undo that. Let's try this again. Face, edge. There we go, they all work. Space bar and done. Okay, so now we have our six-sided cube. This is great if I wanted to 3D print this, but if I want to make six pieces of wood, we can't have two pieces of wood in the same place. So we need to make some finger joints here. And I'm going to give you the really fast, lazy version, right? So we just need to put a finger joint on each side. I'm not even going to measure this one. If you want to take time to measure it, that's totally cool. So we want to start with the bottom edge, double click on that. And since we have our sides drawn in there, we've already got a reference. I just need to make some rectangles. So we'll put one here edge to edge, one here, edge to edge. You can make them as big or as small as you want. And if you make them kind of random, that forces the cube to only fold together one way. So we've got the rectangles and then we just use our push command and we're gonna make that edge disappear. So right there to that. See how that line disappears there? Click this face right here. And if you grab the wrong face, like let's say I grab this one, and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Just hit escape on the keyboard and it will reset your selection. There and there. Okay, so we can see that there's still some overlaps here, but now we've got our joinery cut on that one side. Let's use our trim tool right here. So we're gonna start with the number one. This is our tool piece. And that changes to the number two. One, click on that. We're gonna go all the way around and click on all four sides. And you can see the lines disappearing as I do this. So see right here, there's a bunch of extra lines. And 
and now we can see that. And we can check this if we go over here to our view icon and on component edit, if you click hide rest of model, I can check these pieces. So now this piece, when I double click on it, I can see that it has a cut on it. And I can double click this one, that's got a cut. Double click that, that one's been cut. And the three has been cut. And I can also look at my one piece and see that yes, in fact, it did actually cut those pieces out. So we just keep doing that same thing. We'll do the same on the top up here. Double click on the six. Now, all of a sudden, my, my model disappeared. I want those lines that I can see. So I'm gonna uncheck this right here. And that gives me those lines that I can use to draw the rectangles with. So I can go around and draw four rectangles. Any old place will do. I mean, if I were making for this for display, I'd probably want to measure it. But again, we're just kind of looking for the basic strategy of what are the steps of doing this. Use my push tool. Start with the face, end with the edge. Start with the face, end with the edge. Space bar. Okay, and again, we'll use our trim tool. Over here, it's the middle one that says trim. Number one is the tool, number two is the target. And once I've selected the tool, I can just go around and hit all four targets. Spacebar to exit. And we can see that we've made some new changes here. So it doesn't have that line across there anymore. So right here, I see this double line. So we need to do a couple more edits here. Let's do the four side, double click. And this time we only need to do two rectangles because it's got a rectangle top and bottom already. So I just need to make a rectangle on the side, there and there. And you could do several rectangles if you wanted. P for push, there and there. Space bar, click once outside. So we still have that double line right there. So we use our trim tool. That's the one. The first one is the one that we made the rectangles on, and the second one is our targets. Spacebar, and we can click hide rest of model and double click these now, and I can see, look at this, it's got four edges on it. So as we go around, each piece should have four fingers sticking on there. So I can see on this two right there, this edge needs something. These two edges need something and that edge needs something. So the easiest way would be to pick the one that has two things that it needs right there. Okay, and I need this unchecked so I can get my lines back there. And I've double clicked it, so I'm in my editing mode right there. I've got the dotted lines around the outside. So we'll do a rectangle here and here. Space bar, and then we'll use our push tool. Click, drag, click. Drag, click, space bar, and we're just about done here. One last trim. One, two, and two. Space bar gets me back to my selection arrow. And one more time, let's check that and let's double check all of our pieces. Let's start in order just to make sure we have everything. So one, it's got all four edges, looks good. Two has all four edges. Three has all four edges. Four is over here. That's got all four. Five, and I think this is going to work. Six. So all six of our pieces check out. So from here, we could do an export. We could change these to DXFs. There's a lot of different things we can do, but this is where we're going to stop for now. We have a six-sided die. We do want to make sure we save that. I'm not going to show you my folder. I don't even know what's in there. Make sure you save it in a place where you remember it, and we'll find another video to go to the next step.